Okay, so in our previous chapter, we had created an OS policy. Now, one of the disadvantages of using an OS policy is that it is specific to a particular zone. So if you go to your OS policy, and if you create an OS policy assignment, you have to also mention the target availability zone. So this is one of the factors. So this particular OS policy assignment is only specific to this particular zone. Now, what if you want to create a policy that is applicable for all the zones? So that's when you can use your guest policy. So guest policies would install packages or software within your project for multiple zones. So that is one advantage of using your guest policy over your OS policy. So let's look at the guest policy. So this particular URL I'll give in the description below. So this particular URL tells you on how you can create your policy.yml file. So this policy.yml file is the configuration file that you would upload to install your packages. So your policy.yml file consists of two sections, the assignment section and the required configuration section. So if you look at the assignment section, it tells you which particular virtual machines that you need to target or which particular mach virtual machines need to have these softwares or packages installed. So assignments can be based either on based on your instance name, your instance name prefix, your labels, your zone, or other operating system information. So here are a list of examples that they've given you. So let's look at example one. So here, if you look at the assignment, so it's only targeting, sorry, this is example two. So if you look at example one, you can see that this particular YAML file is only targeting these two virtual machines. That is my instance one and my instance two. And similarly, if you go to your example two, you can see that this particular YAML configuration is targeting all virtual machines that have this prefix as well as this particular prefix. And similarly for example three as well. So this is based on labels. Example four is based on zone. So all virtual machines within this particular zone and this particular zone will be targeted. So these are some of the examples. So the first part, like I said, is the assignment. The second part is the required configuration. So the required configuration within this, you can actually mention all the softwares that you need installed, removed, or auto-updated. So here, once again, let's look at the example. So here, what this particular YAML file states is that it wants this particular package updated. And similarly, if you look at example two, it wants your stack driver installed. And, and here, you can also mention the package repository if you want a particular version of your uh, package installed. Similarly, if you go to example three, example three has multiple packages. So in this particular example three, you can see that this particular my package you want installed and these two packages you want removed. So these are some of the ways in which you can use your uh, or create your YAML files. I'm going back to my project. The first thing I need to do is I need to create a few instances. So let's create a few virtual machine instances. So I'll be creating an E2 micro. And once again, I'll change the boot test to standard so that this falls under the free tire. So similarly, I'll be creating one more instance. So this is instance one. And let's create another instance. So this is going to be instance two. And what we'll do here is we'll mention a separate zone. So the first one is in a us central 1a and this is in us central b and similarly let's make this as e2 micro and let's change this to standard persistent as well click on select and let's create our instance now so now if i had to use my os policy then i would have had to create two os policy assignments one for us central 1a and one for us central 1b now now, because we are using the guest policy, we do not have to do that. So we can just create one OS policy for both these particular instances. So let's do that. So I'll be using my shell script or uh, Cloud Shell to create this particular OS policy. So I've already created a guest policy and it's very straightforward and it has absolutely no uh, complexity whatsoever. So like I said previously, it has the assignment as well as the package. So within the package, you need to mention all the packages or softwares you need to deploy. So within the assignment, you can see that I'm using the instance name prefix and I'm targeting all virtual machines that start with instance dash. So you can see that I've created two instances, instance dash one and instance dash two. So it will be targeting both those instances. And after that, I'm just going to install Node.js using the APT manager since it's Debian. So that's the only thing I need to do. So let's close this and let's run this particular guest policy. Now to run your guest policy, you can again go back to your documentation.
All that you need to do is you need to run this particular command. So within this, you need to mention the policy name as well as the file. So that file corresponds to this particular guest policy.yaml file that we created. So let's run this particular command. So I'll just copy this command and let's paste it here. And let's run our particular command. So one disadvantage of using your OS policy is there's no good way of checking the logs. So we just have to wait and watch and see whether our node has been installed. So that's one disadvantage of using your guest policy over your OS policy. So now let's close our shell and let's open our instance and let's see whether we have our node installed. So let's SSH into it. And you can see that node has been installed. So it has or it was able to install node in this particular machine. So let's look at the other machine as well. So this is a US central one B. And let's do a node version again. And you can see node is installed here as well. So that's how you can use your guest policy to install packages. So I hope this was a useful lecture. I hope that you understood when to use your guest policy and when to use your OS policy. So I'll see you in the next chapter.